right, hi guys. Um, <laughs> I purchased this little wooden tray thing that's on wheels, mainly because I wanted to work off of it on my laptop months after I've already started working from home, which is kind of stupid, right? I should have gotten it sooner. And I also wanted a surface to eat food on and have my drinks on when I'm sitting here watching the TV. So I'm really happy with this. It makes things easier. And now I also have a surface if I ever want to talk about a product. So this is going to be my very first unboxing for the Google Pixel 4a. So right now I have the Pixel 3. And unfortunately, the main reason I am replacing it is because I've dropped it. So up here in the top left corner, the glass is shattered and um, a crack also goes in front of my camera. I also have a big crack across the back of my phone. And um, the major issue that I've been having with it is that it overheats very, very easily. Basically, if I ever wanted to do like an Instagram story for a full minute, by the end of the first minute, it gets really hot. And then any video that I take afterwards, it's just going to come out not so great or my phone starts working slowly. So of course, it is my fault. I only got this phone last July in Montana when I dropped my edge into the river when I went kayaking with Riley. So anyways, the main reason I got the 4A is because I use my phone very basic. I don't like to play games on there. I don't like to keep too many apps on there. I always try to keep it to less than 10 apps. I only have one homepage and that homepage isn't even filled with apps half the time. I don't put all of them on there because I don't like the whole screen with apps all over it. I like to see the picture that I choose for my wallpaper. So anyways, I only use maybe Instagram. Lately, I've had to use obviously Facebook for my dog training business. And I've also got, you know, YouTube, Twitch, but stuff that I don't always use too often. Just in general, I like to use this as bare bones as possible, just like email, text messaging, and then a couple apps. So originally, actually, while I was in Montana, I wanted the 3A, Google Pixel 3A, but they didn't have any in stock there. So I was unable to do that. And actually, I was contemplating getting the Google Pixel 4, but they discontinued it already. So I was unable to get that. And instead of waiting, you know, four months until the Google Pixel 5, I just decided I don't think I could wait that long for another phone because the way that I've been using it now is just not going well. So here's what it looks like. I think there was only one color for it from what I can remember. The thing I'm really glad about that they apparently removed for the Pixel 4 is they kept the fingerprint sensor back here. And apparently their buttons are very clicky. Oh, oops, it turned it on. <laughs> you know what, in the meantime, while it sets up, let's talk a little bit. Well, so far, I am still looking forward to my next board and train. I haven't gotten someone that is willing to do it yet because, of course, most people that are looking for training services, they're not willing to pay the price. But that is their problem, in my opinion, because if they have major issues with their dog that's affecting their livelihood and they're unwilling to pay the price to fix it, then they can go to somebody else because I know the work that I do when it comes to the dog training. I also know that most people aren't really able to get these types of results because maybe they don't use the same tools or maybe they're positive reinforcement only. But just in general, I've noticed, especially on my ads sometimes where people complain about the price. But whenever I talk to my brother and when I talk to other people, it's kind of like, you know, what you're worth or you know what you're offering and most people who aren't willing to pay the price you don't want them as your customer anyways they are the people that can go to PetSmart and Petco and train in group classes and just yeah it's I don't want those types of customers anyways so I have mostly been getting private lessons which isn't bad um, I think I just like the challenge of the board and train because I get to work with them all the time but yeah so right now I did a walking lesson with a girl with her German Shepherd this past Sunday. That went very well. Um, she is someone who uses all the tools already. She uses a prong and e-collar and she does structure with her German Shepherd. So for the walk, she was struggling because she has anxiety and also where she was positioning her dog 
wasn't necessarily the best for what he was having problems with. He was reactive to seeing dogs or people passing by. He would do low growls and low barks. So when she positioned him too far forward where he's allowed to look around instead of seeing her body at all, I asked her, I told her to move the heel further back and um, practice starting, stopping, turning, all those types of things that teaches the dog, oh, if I don't keep up with you, then there's going to be pressure. So the walk went very well. Um, I'd say the last half hour of the hour long session, he looked like he was in a really, really calm and relaxed space compared to his nervous behavior in the very beginning and based on like what she described to me. So I would say that was a very good and successful lesson. The one before that was the puppy, Siberian Husky puppy. And I'd say that went about as well as it could. Um, unfortunately, I can't hold another lesson with those owners just yet because their prong collar doesn't arrive until Sunday. And I want them to have a couple days to practice with it before we have our next lesson. So those are the main two that I have. And then on Sunday, this upcoming Sunday, I have another girl with another Husky, 10 month old Husky that needs help with the walk, pulling people around. So. I think I'm going to have a lot of people contacting me about the walk, mainly because my ad right now is my board and train husky before and after for the walk. So it shows him jumping and flailing and jumping on me. And then afterwards, I show him walking past a dog barking at him like right up close. And he looks really, really good about it. So I think that definitely convinces people that I work. I do very well when it comes to the walk. Hi, everyone. It is Saturday. And I kind of just got back from looking at some open houses for fun because that was kind of something I've always liked the idea of doing just to like actually go inside the house instead of admiring from afar. So I only went to see two today with Jose, but I guess kind of wanted to talk about a few things just to catch people up and maybe talk about my feelings. So um, I recorded a segment yesterday about receiving my Pixel 4a but unfortunately that is moot because it has speaker problems right away from me receiving it. Um, basically the top speaker has a crackling sound and it's pretty awful. Like if I put volume on full blast, it's really, really noticeable. Sound quality you can just tell is really bad. I'm assuming this is not what the phone is supposed to be like, but just in general, it's new straight out of the box and I'm already having this issue, so I was like, fuck it, I'm not gonna spend my own time troubleshooting what should be a brand new product that should work well right out of the box, so I decided to return it right away, and instead, I'm gonna pay the deductible for my current phone on the protection plan and get a replacement because I'm stupid. I've always paid $15 a month for insurance for my phone, but um, for some reason, when I cracked my screen like six months ago, I didn't think about filing a claim, so I decided to do that. I should get the phone on Monday. Hopefully it's new, maybe, um, because I feel like one time before when I got a replacement, they sent, they sent me a new one instead of refurbished, which is wonderful, but we'll see about that. I have a private lesson tomorrow for a walk. A woman has a 10 month old Siberian Husky that's pulling her on the walk and she bought a three lesson package. So obviously one lesson is dedicated to the walk, but um, aside from obedience commands for a second lesson, I'm not quite sure what I would teach her for the third lesson, mainly because there are certain owners who won't be as accepting to the house structure, which in my opinion is way more important than obedience and the walk. I mean, obviously the walk is important, but if you do the house structure, the walk is always going to be way better than if you didn't have it. So of course, that is something that I'm kind of getting used to when it comes to dog training, understanding that not every owner is gonna be 100% on board with everything that I say. And that's okay because that's their dog and what they choose to do or not to do is what's gonna be their experience. So for example, if they choose to not crate their dog, they're gonna to have to deal with destroyed furniture when they're not home. That's just what they choose, right? I can't influence them aside from stating my opinion. I'm excited to see how tomorrow goes. I actually feel like really confident in teaching the walk because I've had a fair amount of experience with that one lately and I just feel like I do it really well because I do it in a very matter of fact neutral way and 
Um, even with Remo, my board and trained dog, he ended up being like really, really good on the walk and not very reactive at all towards the end of just the first week. So that's tomorrow. I guess something I don't mind sharing that I kind of haven't been as open about even through Instagram is the fact that um, me and Jose broke up and I feel like that was kind of building up for a while now. Um, to be honest, when we went to Utah, um, I wasn't really that happy there. I was quite unhappy, actually. Um, we did have some good moments, but I feel like for the most part, I wasn't happy. And that definitely upsets me because I love doing these road trips. I love traveling with Riley and just being able to explore. And we also aren't allowed the luxury of taking vacations very often per year. So for example, my company only gives us 15 days of vacation. That's three weeks out of 52 weeks of the year. And because they feel precious, it would be nice to take a vacation and really enjoy it fully. So I would say that's just like one of the aspects of relationships that can be a sacrifice where if you need to accommodate somebody else, it could affect your experience compared to if I went by myself. And yeah, so whenever I think back to that, I do feel disappointed because I didn't get to enjoy a trip this year like last year. Last year was actually incredible for me because I went to Albuquerque and then I also went to Idaho and Montana. I just felt like those were really great trips. But this year I went to Utah and I actually would have rather gone to Colorado because that was what I planned this year. Colorado was going to be this year. But since we decided to go together, he didn't want to drive that far. And when it comes to maybe making plans with somebody else, if they ever give me the impression that, oh, that state is too far, I don't want to drive so far, then I just don't even feel like pushing for it. I'm just like, oh, okay, that's out of the question. We're just really different people. Um, there were some differences that we weren't really able to compromise on. Some of them were like pretty core parts of ourselves. So for me, I'm really organized. I'm really structured. I also um, care a lot about punctuality and he is pretty much the exact opposite of that. So there would be times where we would clash on that and it can be difficult because I like my punctuality and being like really strict on, you know, if we decide to meet at a time, if you don't show up at that time, then I do get agitated about it because I feel like that is disrespecting the other person's time if you make them wait or if you're late. But he's more like of a loose, easygoing person in regards to that. So um, that part can just be hard to compromise on because if feels like a part of yourself that some people just aren't able to really change, especially if they're not ones who see their perspective as being one that needs changing. But um, there were definitely other things that I do think long term that we just won't really work well on. So um, it does suck because when we do spend time together, we do have a lot of fun. We joke a lot. We laugh a lot. But um, when it comes to some of the things that I was stressing on, when it comes to, you know, when you're dating someone, they have certain traits that you actually need to care about because you're dating them. But when you're friends, you don't have to care about them. So that was kind of like how I was feeling where when you're a friend, you don't have to care about how they train their dogs. You don't have to care about their punctuality as much. And like some of the things they do in terms of how they handle their life, you don't have to care about that because you don't have to think of yourselves as a unity. But when you're in a relationship, you do. So I just feel like deciding to break things off was a bit of a relief for me. And I don't want to say that and make it sound insulting because it's not. It's just kind of the truth. Because when you do have differences in a relationship, and then you choose to break it off, the things you were stressing about are no longer an issue for you. They don't apply anymore. So that's where the relief comes in. Yeah, I guess I'm just trying to kind of work things out because 
truthfully, I don't mind continuing to spend time with him. I know that most people would say, you know, as exes, it will muddy the waters, not a good idea, whatever. But I also have noticed in the past that I do tend to worry too much about how it looks like from the outside. So I should not care about that, even though I'm talking about it right now. And as long as I know that continued interaction doesn't actually make me unhappy, then I'm okay with it, which for the most part, I kind of am. Like, I don't actually feel unhappy about any of this, really. Not to the point where it would be concerning. I'm just going to see how things go. Because honestly, once in a while, I might ask him to help out for recording for me, especially tomorrow on the walk. I like recording walks because I think that that's a problem that a lot of people have. And plus, having content for my business to be posted on YouTube or Facebook is really, really helpful, right? I need to be putting out content. That's the reality of what it's like now to have business in general, let alone a business like dog training where you want to show yourself working and showing the results that you get with your clients to convince other people that you're worthy of being hired. So that's my little ramble for today. Uh, it's five o'clock right now. So maybe in about 30 minutes to an hour, I'm gonna take her out for a walk. I'm probably gonna edit this video now actually because yeah, I, I, I like posting to my main channel because you guys like to hear about my life, I think. And um, I don't wanna just leave you in the dust entirely. So thank you guys for listening to me. Sorry, I'm burping a little bit. And Hopefully, I have some exciting updates for you. Actually, I'll include a little bit of clips here of Rylai doing hurdles because I bought some and I am enjoying the fact that I can exercise her indoors with it. So I'll be doing that here and there, trying to challenge and test her to be more fluid with jumping over it while running or like raising it so it's pretty high so she's actually jumping over it really well despite being a clumsy jumper, I feel. But I am also really, really excited. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this, but my brother's kittens were born um, a couple days ago, almost a week now. And basically he's able to take them home in 10 weeks. So when he takes them home, I want to road trip up there, bring all my cats. I mean, I only have two. Bring all my pets, two cats and a dog, and basically, when I arrive up there, I'm going to dump my cats at his place and then I'm going to rent an Airbnb with Riley. And I'm just really excited about that because kittens are adorable, of course, and they're also ragdoll, which is really cute. And then I get to watch Milo and Sammy interact with these kittens and Riley, too. So um, I'm, that's something I'm really, really looking forward to. And uh, I am excited to share that with you guys as well. My brother actually bought an expensive ass camera and intends to record his kittens as well. So maybe when he sets up his channel, I will recommend it to you guys to check it out or something. But all right, now I am done. So I will see you guys in the next video. Have a wonderful weekend. Good. Here, let me lower it. Right. Yes, good. Very good, smooth. Good job. Good. Ready? All right, let's go. Good. Good. Good job. Let's go. Good. Good. Good girl. Good job.